Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the auxiliary view command found within an Autodesk Inventor drawing file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos of my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are in our drawing file. And the first thing I did was I used the base view command to drop this base view here in my drawing space. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the base view command, go watch my video on that subject because it goes in depth on all of the little options that are available within those command windows. Okay, so if you are unfamiliar with the base view command, Pause this video, go watch that one first, and then come back to this one. Now, we have the space view in our model environment, and what we need to do first to create an auxiliary view is click on the auxiliary view command button up here. We want to select the view of interest that we want to create this view off of. Okay, so I'll select that view. And now we get our auxiliary view command window that pops up. Starting over here in the upper left hand corner of this window, this section allows us to control the labeling of our auxiliary view. Moving over here, we have our style section so we can control the um, presence of hidden lines and we can also shade or unshade the view. And then moving down here, we can toggle on or off the definition of our auxiliary view in our base view. OK, so we'll go through each one of these sections individually so that we can see what each one of these commands do. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our view identifier. So before we do that, let's go ahead and toggle this view identification on. I'll come back to what these do here in just a moment. And then of course, how you pull this auxiliary view out is you click on auxiliary, you click on the view of interest, and then you click a line that you want to reference. Okay, so whichever line we select in this drawing view will dictate which direction we pull this auxiliary view in. So if I select this slanted line here, we can either create an auxiliary view that's perpendicular. Okay, so see this dashed line that's pulling off of that base view that is perpendicular to this slanted line, or we can pull the view to where it's parallel. Okay, so you see that that line there for the auxiliary view is parallel with the original slanted line that I selected. So let's go ahead and pull the view out in this direction and then just left click to drop it. Of course, before I do that, I'm going to toggle the label visibility on so we can see what this view identifier is. We'll left click on our mouse and there we go. We've dropped the view onto our drawing sheet. And as you can see here, we have our view identification in the form of view AA. We'll take a step back, go to auxiliary, click on this view. All right, so this time I want to leave the letter B in this space and do the same thing. We'll toggle visibility on and left click. And as you can see here, it's changed to BB. OK, so that is our view identifier. Let's take another step back. OK, so moving to the right, we have our scale selection currently set to two to one because the base view is set to two to one. So what we can do is change this to something different. Let's change this to a one half scale. And as you can see there, our wrench has shrunk down and we can left click there. And that is what your scale option does for you. Moving down into the left, of course, we have our toggle label visibility. You've already seen what this does. When we activate it and drop our view, we see our view identifier there. But if we leave that box unchecked or if we um, don't toggle that on and just leave it off like this and left click, we don't get that view identifier. Moving to the right, we have our edit view label button. So when we click on this button, we get our format text menu that pops up. So this gives us complete control over what we see under our view label. So currently it has plain text. So we have the word view in plain text. And then to the right, we have two properties. OK, so we have a view property and then we have a hyphen and then another view property. So what these properties do is they look for whatever is typed in this box. OK, so for example, I have the letter B typed into this box, so it's going to type out view B dash B. OK, so it's going to read view B B. Now, moving down, we have the word scale in plain text. And then to the right of that, we have another property that looks at the scale of the drawing view. OK, so this is really helpful for automating what appears in your view identification. OK, so if you want to insert other properties, all you have to do is, for example, let's just go ahead and press enter so we can go down a line. And uh, you want to go to this first drop down menu. 
And of course, these properties are under view label properties. So you can left click on that and then you can select the specific property from this drop down. OK, so when we do that, we can select view, for example, and then to insert that into this space, you just click this button here that says add text parameter. And when we left click on that, it drops our property into our field. Now, let's go ahead and click OK to see what happens now that we've added this extra view label property down here. So again, since this is a view property, it's going to look for whatever's in this view identifier field, while this scale property is looking for whatever's in this scale field here. OK, so now let's click OK and um, we'll toggle label visibility on and drop the view. As you can see, we have view B, B scale two to one. And then there is our letter B as expected, because again, this is looking for whatever was in that view identifier field because this was a view property. Now, moving over to our style section, let's take a look at the hidden line option. So that's this first box here. And when we enable that option and drop the view, you can see we have hidden lines shown. So this is showing us details that we would not normally be able to see from this particular drawing angle. OK, so this point of view, looking at this model, we would not be able to see the details that are on the other side of this wrench. But with hidden lines shown, we can actually pick up some of those details. So this is a nice way to show some of the hidden features that might be in your model. And it's a great way of saving space as well. So you don't have to do a bunch of section views if you don't need it. OK, so really handy tool. Let's go back. We'll go to auxiliary. OK, and now let's take a look at our hidden line removed option. I'll left click. This is already pre-selected, by the way. And there we go. See, we have no hidden lines shown, just the solid lines. OK, let's go back once again. All right, now let's take a look at the shaded option. So we can enable this or disable it, and it does not impact which one of these are selected. So you can show hidden lines and shade, or you can shade with hidden lines removed. So um, let's show the hidden lines with the shading on the part. We'll left click. And there we go. So we still see our hidden lines, but the part is now shaded or that view is now shaded. You, of course, can do the opposite. So you can go in here and um, we can still shade it, but remove the hidden lines, left click. And now we just have a shaded view, but with no hidden lines. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what our definition and base view option does for us. We'll enable this option by clicking in this checkbox and let's left click somewhere out here in space to drop this view. And here is our view definition. So this is view BB based on our uh, view identifier information that we've entered into that previous field. And this is the perspective in which we're looking at the base view to get this auxiliary view. OK, so it's generally a good idea to label auxiliary views. So we want to toggle that label visibility on. So if you already dropped the view and you forgot to toggle that on, all you have to do is double click on the view of interest and go to this toggle label visibility button and left click on that and click OK. There we go. Now we have our label uh, for that particular view. And of course, you can move this view as necessary, but I want you to notice how it's locked in alignment with the base view. Now, if you want to break that alignment, all you have to do is right click on the view, go down to alignment and go to break. OK, now we can move this view wherever we want and still maintain the definition in the base view. Um, so this is really nice because as long as you have that definition, the reader should not be confused as to how you're getting this particular auxiliary view. Now, let's take a look at how we can edit some of the view properties after we've already dropped it into our drawing space. So all you have to do is double click on the view or you can right click and go to edit view. OK, so you get to this menu either way. So we can double click or we can right click and go to edit view. And um, here we can style it from the base. So all of the style settings will pull from the base view or we can uncheck that box and then set up some custom settings in here. So let's say we want that shaded and then we want to change this label to an A. OK, so we can change that to the letter A and then let's change the scale. So you uncheck the scale from base box and then you can go ahead and change the scale. Let's change it to one to one and click OK. And there we go. Now it's shaded, scaled one to one and the view is designated as view AA. And on top of that, the definition in the base view changes automatically as well.
That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the Auxiliary View command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.